Okay, so next game we're talking about, Dahl, another 330 game, is number 21, Missouri, at number 15, Alabama, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC. Really, the storyline, this is pretty much a playoff elimination game for these two teams. The loser of this game probably sees his playoff hopes evaporate, just like the loser of Boise State UNLV. But even the Boise State UNLV, you can make an argument that they're not dead yet. I think that the loser of this game is dead in the college football playoff race because Alabama suffered their second loss in three games this past weekend against Tennessee, and it's highly highly unlikely that a three loss team can get into the 12 team college football playoff even alabama i don't know i don't think a three loss alabama will be able to get into the playoff so alabama by that account cannot afford to lose a game the rest of the year missouri they only have one loss right now but that one loss they were blown out by texas a&m and this past week they needed an 11 point comeback to beat auburn who's currently two and five on the season so missouri hasn't looked great at all and alabama by the way Alabama is only currently the only top 25 team Missouri plays the rest of the year and will likely be the only top 25 team Missouri plays the rest of the year. So if they lose this game, there's not a lot of other games for them to prove that they are a top 12 team in college football. So this is a must, even though they have one loss, this is a must win game for Missouri to impress the college football playoff committee uh, in Alabama by, with two losses, they can't afford a third loss to make the college football playoff. Yeah, no, I think I think Missouri's season comes down to this week. It, yeah. it does. You look at the rest of their games. Look, at these they're not easy games, some of them either. When you talk about Oklahoma, South Carolina, Mississippi State, Arkansas, there, there's three games in there that, that could be competitive the way that Missouri's lack of execution this year has been. And Bama's season really comes down to the next two weeks, I think, when you talk about this week with Missouri, and then is it next week they play LSU or the week after? They might get a buy in between there. But yeah. the, the next game against LSU those are the two games that that's that's their shot to save their season I think at 10 and 2 I still think Alabama would get in especially with, yeah. especially with the win over Georgia that's a big deal right and, and they beat LSU too it, and yeah yeah I mean yeah you're right if you get the LSU win even this win yeah. okay it's something they would have enough at 10 and 2 but I'm not sure they would have enough at 9 and 3 it's but you know no. when you talk about it, I think there's going to be enough teams at at least ten and two that are gonna get in there. It's gonna be it's gonna be dangerous if they lose another game. But this is this is an interesting game between two between two teams who have not played their best football. No, not at all. So it really is a pseudo playoff game and Alabama has a bye week after this week and then LSU. So that'll be a huge game. We'll pre- oh, obviously we will preview that game in a couple of weeks. But Dolan, you have the Alabama offense in this game has been not looking too great over the last couple of weeks with Jalen Morrow against South Carolina and against Tennessee. So what should we be looking out for? What's going on with Jalen Morrow in this passing attack right now? It's, it's just, it, we'll go back to the Georgia game. We, we thought maybe Jalen Milrow had this solved, right? Where it was, he was so reliant on the deep ball and, and teams would blitz him and make him get rid of the football and make him throw shorter passes and take away the home runs. We thought against Georgia that he found it. And he was going to, oh, this was going to be the first round pick game. He was going to become a first round pick, Heisman candidate, all that stuff. And we've seen the last couple of games, it's gone back to the old habits, right? It's just constantly with Milrow about if, if you prevent the home runs, then he doesn't have a whole lot of other answers to beat you. And that's what happened. That's what's happened in the last two games. He's one for eight on deep balls in, in the last two games. And the one was that busted coverage at the end of the South Carolina game where somebody was running wide open, nobody within 20 yeah. yards. So he just he could throw a balloon out there and he would have hit him. So they're just not – they're not getting the deep ball. They're not getting. They tried to get Ryan Williams involved more last week, 19 targets, but a lot of those shorter targets, Jalen Milrow was missing. He's just not that precise a passer under 20 yards. The accuracy's not there. The footwork can be shoddy. He can look rushed. They have to get the deep ball back going because this very much reminds me of Ole Miss's issues earlier in the year. It was like, okay, you're too reliant on this. You're too reliant on home runs. You're not hitting enough singles. And Jalen Milrow right now, he needs to hit the singles. The good part for him in this game is. Missouri's secondary hasn't been great. Nothing about Missouri has really looked great throughout the year, but you talk about right now, they're 84th in coverage grade against a deep ball this year. And if I take out two freebies earlier in the year against Murray State and Buffalo, that drops into the bottom 15 in the country. There, there, you can see they haven't seen a high volume of deep balls because they haven't they haven't played against a whole lot of high flying passing offenses. But there's been some mental lapses in coverage for Missouri. There's going to be opportunities there, but. Bama still needs to kind of work into it. They still need to run the ball. Some, and, I, and Missouri's got a pretty good run defense, but they still need to run the ball. They still need to take the steps to set those things up, and, and they can get there. And, and, and I just didn't think we would get to a point this year where basically they would be so reliant on just Milrow and Ryan Williams of yeah. all of them. You know, these other receivers, I, I need them to show up too if they're going to win this game because right now – 
it's Milro and it's Williams and it's just waiting for home runs and they're waiting a little too long and they're putting themselves in danger whether it be in losing games or close games against South Carolina teams know the book has been out you either you can spy Milro and make him stand there all day and sit back and just make him check it down you can blitz him to make him get rid of it quickly or like Vanderbilt did just keep the ball out of his hands I mean there's enough ways to do this now that Alabama's got to find a way to adjust and play more like they did against Georgia absolutely and the other side of the ball Dolan is about Brady Cook who's also been disappointing this year but he was heroic in that win over Auburn so if you don't know and this has been all over social media right so pretty much anyone watching this show who's a big fan of college football obviously uh, would know the story but I'll go over it anyways he injured his ankle in the first quarter against Auburn he went to the hospital after that to get an MRI on that ankle thankfully it turned up negative nothing was nothing was structurally damaged that badly and he returned in the third quarter of that game to lead Missouri on an 11 point comeback victory so heroic game by Brady Cook and and he just deserves all the credit in the world for that but even when he's healthy this passing game ticks has taken an unexpected step back from what it was last year right now Missouri is 53rd in EPA per pass they were 10th in EPA per pass last year despite they returned Brady Cook, their star quarterback from last year at least. They returned their top five receivers, including Luther Burden III, who we had as the number one receiver in college football entering the year. And they returned their star offensive coordinator and Kirby Moore. So just looking at that, and their offensive line is still pretty good. It's, it's not like it's an offensive line issue either. It doesn't really make sense besides just regression from all these players, honestly. Right now, Brady Cook is 86th among FBS quarterbacks with a 70 passing grade. And Missouri, with all those amazing weapons, is 91st in receiving grade this year. Now, I will say, you mentioned how Missouri's secondary is vulnerable in this game. Alabama's has been vulnerable at times this year as well. Right now, they're 42nd in EPA per pass, 46th in coverage grade. Nothing too awful, but it's not the elite Alabama secondaries we saw even as early as last year uh, from them. And the Crimson Tide's two worst games in coverage came in their two losses to Vanderbilt and Tennessee. So this is an area that Missouri must exploit to pull off the upset. And if not... I just don't know if Missouri's going to have enough to win this game. No, I, I agree. I mean, look, I, again, I think the story in this game is you've got two teams that are not executing very well. I, I, I just, it, it's, it's just what it comes down to. They're both extremely talented. We thought Missouri maybe had top 10 talent coming into the year, yep. but if you don't execute, if you don't play good football, this is what happens is now, you, now you're only in week nine and you've got your season on the brink, and that's the case for both of them. Yeah, absolutely. So, Dalton, in this playoff elimination game, Who keeps their season alive and who gets a fatal blow to their playoff hopes? I I think Bama keeps it alive. I'll I'll take him. I'll take him at home in Tuscaloosa, kind of the friendly confines down there. And at least I have sometimes seen them execute the way they're supposed to. I I have not watched a single game from Missouri. I mean, okay, they played UMass a couple weeks ago or last week. I'm not. I'm not taking any yeah. two weeks ago I'm not taking anything into account playing UMass. We love the Minutemen though. Of course we do. I mean, yeah, we love every college team, but. I, I have not seen Missouri execute to their full potential in any really meaningful game this year. And, and I've at least seen Bama do it a couple of times. Right now, even with Milrow struggles the last two games, I, I have to trust him more than Brady Cook. Brady yeah. Cook is just straight up missed throws all season. And, and I don't know what happened between last year and this year with him, but he's missed throws downfield, especially big plays that could have been had all season. This Missouri team, they haven't executed all year. They have found ways to beat themselves. We saw it against Texas A&M where, when they got the doors blown off. Them that they may they may just not be ready for this level of competition this season. I've got Alabama twenty eight to twenty. I think there's moments here where Missouri could flash, but I think it's too late for them to start executing now. I'm with that, and also Dolan. Not only has, has Brady Cook been disappointing this year, he's also on a bum ankle now. So who knows how that'll affect him uh, in this game against Alabama as well. I got Ms. Alabama winning this game as well, thirty four to twenty one. I think Jalen Monroe will bounce back against that vulnerable uh, Missouri secondary uh, after an uninspiring last two games. He'll lead Alabama to victory, keep their season alive, and sets up a massive matchup in a couple weeks against LSU. While Missouri officially, we can call it, we can stick a fork in them and say they're not making the college football playoff uh, if they lose this game, which I think will happen. And both of us agree will happen. So both of us taking Alabama. <laughs> 